Christopher Columbus, a Genoese explorer, remains an enigmatic figure in the annals of history, revered for his audacious maritime endeavors that transformed the course of human civilization. Born around 1451 in the Republic of Genoa, Columbus emerged from a humble background, marked by an insatiable curiosity and an unyielding determination to reach the fabled riches of Asia by sailing westward. His life and voyages are a tapestry woven with threads of ambition, controversy, and historical consequence, providing a fascinating glimpse into the age of discovery. Columbus's early life was shaped by the maritime milieu of the Mediterranean. Raised in the bustling port city of Genoa, he absorbed the maritime traditions of his surroundings. While details of his formative years remain somewhat elusive, it is known that Columbus honed his navigational skills through apprenticeship and practical experience on the seas. His early years as a mariner saw him sailing to various ports in the Mediterranean, garnering an intimate knowledge of navigation, cartography and the trade routes that connected Europe to the East. However, Columbus's aspirations surpassed the limits of his Mediterranean experiences. By the late 15th century, the spice trade routes to the East were firmly controlled by the Ottomans, and European nations sought alternative routes to access the riches of Asia. It was against this backdrop that Columbus conceived his daring plan to reach the East by sailing westward across the vast and unexplored expanse of the Atlantic Ocean. In the age of Columbus, the prevailing notion that educated Westerners clung to a flat earth is a gross misperception. Indeed, nearly all scholars of Columbus's time were well aware that the earth was a sphere, a concept ingrained since antiquity. The tools of celestial navigation employing the positions of the sun and stars had been employed by astronomers and were gradually making their way into maritime practices. The 3rd century BC calculations of Eratosthenes, who accurately deduced the Earth's circumference using basic geometry and shadows cast by objects at two distant locations, were known to scholars. Posidonius in the 1st century BC corroborated Eratosthenes' findings through stellar observations at different sites. However, Columbus found himself entangled in a web of miscalculations and misconceptions, Ptolemy's use of outdated units of distance led him to underestimate the Earth's size by about a third. The three critical cosmographical parameters shaping Columbus's endeavors were the distance across the ocean between Europe and Asia, the Earth's circumference, and the number of miles or leagues in a degree of longitude, a concept derived from medieval interpretations of Aristotle's theories on the relationship between water and land surfaces. Pierre Daly's Imago Mundi, a 1410 work, influenced Columbus with Alfraganus's estimate that a degree of latitude equaled about 57 Arabic miles. Unfortunately, Columbus failed to recognize that this measure was expressed in Arabic miles, longer than the Roman miles he was accustomed to. Consequently, he perceived the Earth as 75% of Eratosthenes' calculation and miscalculated the distance from the Canary Islands to the Indies by 58%. Most scholars of the time subscribed to Ptolemy's belief that Eurasia spanned 180 degrees longitude, while the actuality was 130 degrees to the Chinese mainland or 150 degrees to Japan at the latitude of Spain. Columbus, influenced by Marinus of Tyre's estimate from Dailis, Imago Mundi, envisioned a longitudinal span of 225 degrees at the latitude of Rhodes. Some historians suggest he may have been inspired by the apocryphal book Two Esdras, which posited that the majority of the globe was habitable. Columbus was aware of Marco Polo's assertion that Japan was closer to the equator than reality and influenced by Toscanelli's belief in inhabited islands even farther east than Japan, including the mythical Antilia. Compiling this information, Columbus estimated a distance of 2,400 nautical miles from the Canary Islands to Japan, a far cry from the actual 10,600 nautical miles. Despite the implausibility of such a long voyage with contemporary ship capabilities, 
Columbus's audacious project found a patron in the Catholic monarchs of Spain, eager to outpace European rivals in the quest for trade with the Indies. Columbus's grandiose plan, though fraught with error, held the promise of a competitive advantage. While Columbus erred in calculating the degrees of longitude and the distances involved, he shrewdly utilized the prevailing trade winds that proved crucial to navigating the Atlantic. His plan involved sailing first to the Canary Islands before capitalizing on the northeast trade wind to continue westward. The return journey, however, necessitated navigating against the wind, employing the challenging technique of beating. To accomplish this, Columbus planned to follow the curving trade winds northeastward to the middle latitudes of the North Atlantic, where he could catch the westerlies that blew toward Western Europe. The navigational strategy Columbus employed had its roots in the Portuguese tradition known as the Volta do Mar, or Turn of the Sea. Columbus, through his marriage, gained access to nautical charts and logs prepared during the voyages sponsored by Prince Henry the Navigator. In the intricate dance of diplomacy and persuasion that marked the sponsorship of Columbus's first voyage, the explorer's journey was far from assured. By 1484, Columbus, fueled by the flame of his ambitious vision, laid his plans before King John II of Portugal. The king, Discerning the inherent flaws in Columbus's calculations, his estimates for the voyage were a mere quarter of the actual distance, submitted the proposal to his advisers, who rightly rejected it. Undeterred, Columbus made a second appeal to the Portuguese court in 1488, but the winds of fortune did not favor him. The return of Bartolomeu Diaz with news of rounding the southern tip of Africa near the Cape of Good Hope overshadowed Columbus's aspirations. Undeterred and with an indefatigable spirit, Columbus redirected his efforts towards the Iberian monarchs, Ferdinand II of Aragon and Isabella I of Castile. United by marriage and ruling over several kingdoms, the Catholic monarchs held the keys to Columbus's potential sponsorship. On the 1st of May, 1486, Columbus, having secured permission, laid out his plans before Queen Isabella. However, the learned men of Spain, echoing their Portuguese counterparts, dismissed Columbus's vision as impractical, decrying his underestimation of the distance to Asia. Yet, recognizing the potential of Columbus's ideas and perhaps seeking to keep him within their realm, Ferdinand and Isabella offered him a small allowance to continue research in Spain. The turning point arrived when Ferdinand and Isabella, having conquered Granada in January 1492, marked the culmination of the Reconquista, the war against the Moors on the Iberian Peninsula. A council led by Isabella's confessor, Hernando de Talavera, initially found Columbus's proposal implausible. Unbeknownst to Columbus, he had left for France when Ferdinand intervened, dispatching emissaries to appeal to the Queen. The persuasive powers of the king's clerk ultimately convinced Isabella that Columbus, if spurned, would take his ideas elsewhere. Isabella, recognizing the potential of Columbus's vision, sent a royal guard to fetch him. In the capitulations of Santa Fe in April 1492, the Catholic monarchs committed to Columbus's ambitious voyage. The terms were enticing, promising Columbus the rank of Admiral of the Ocean Sea, along with the titles of Viceroy and Governor of all new lands he might claim for Spain. He had the privilege of nominating three individuals for any office in these new territories, and 10% of all revenues from these lands would be his in perpetuity. Furthermore, he could acquire one-eighth interest in any commercial venture in the newfound lands, and claim one-eighth of the profits. This landmark agreement marked the crystallization of Columbus's sponsorship, propelling him towards the historic voyage that would redefine the contours of the known world. On the 3rd of August, 1492, Columbus set sail from Palos de la Frontera with three small ships, the Santa Maria, the Pinta, and the Nina. The crew, a mix of seasoned sailors and adventurous volunteers, ventured into the unknown with a sense of trepidation and excitement. 
the voyage was fraught with challenges, from the crew's initial anxiety over the seemingly endless ocean to their fears of sea monsters and concerns about dwindling provisions. After a long and arduous journey, marked by the crew's increasing restlessness and doubts, land was sighted on the 12th of October 1492. The triumphant moment marked the first encounter between the Old World and the Americas. Columbus believed he had reached the outer islands of Asia, and he named the land San Salvador. This event marked the beginning of a new chapter in world history, initiating the Columbian Exchange, a transformative exchange of plants, animals, cultures and ideas between the Eastern and Western Hemispheres. Columbus continued his exploration, convinced that he had found a route to Asia. He explored the islands of the Caribbean, including Cuba and Hispaniola, establishing the first European settlement in the Americas, La Navidad, on Christmas Day of 1492. However, his interactions with the indigenous people were marked by a mix of curiosity, cultural misunderstanding and, unfortunately, exploitation. Columbus saw the native peoples as potential converts to Christianity and sources of wealth for the Spanish crown. The subsequent voyages of Columbus, spanning 1493 to 1504, further expanded European knowledge of the New World. He explored the Caribbean, Central America, and the northern coast of South America, all the while grappling with the complexities of navigation, cartography, and the geographical realities of the lands he encountered. Columbus's voyages opened the door to further exploration and exploitation of the Americas by European powers, setting the stage for the age of colonization. Despite his contributions to geographical knowledge, Columbus's legacy is marred by controversy and criticism. The impact of European colonization on indigenous populations was devastating, leading to cultural assimilation, disease outbreaks and violence. Columbus's own actions, including his treatment of the indigenous people and his failure to find the expected wealth of Asia, strained his relationship with the Spanish crown. In 1500, Columbus faced challenges at home as well. The Spanish crown appointed Francisco de Bobadilla to investigate complaints about Columbus's governance on Hispaniola. The inquiry resulted in Columbus's arrest and subsequent return to Spain in chains. While the charges against him were eventually dropped, Columbus's standing had been significantly tarnished. The final years of Columbus's life were marked by a mix of triumph and tragedy. He made his fourth and final voyage in 1502, exploring the coasts of Central America and encountering the formidable challenges of the region's unpredictable weather and treacherous waters. By 1504, Columbus returned to Spain, a weary and ailing man, his dreams of finding a western route to Asia unfulfilled. In the twilight of his life, Columbus sought vindication and recognition for his achievements. Despite his pivotal role in reshaping the known world, Columbus found himself sidelined in the wake of newer explorations. The discovery of the Pacific Ocean by Vasco Núñez de Balboa in 1513 and the circumnavigation of the globe by Ferdinand Magellan's expedition in 1519 to 1522 eclipsed Columbus's achievements. Christopher Columbus died on the 20th May 1506 in Valladolid, Spain, without realizing the true extent of his impact on history. He lived and died believing he had reached Asia, unaware that he had opened a new chapter in the human story the exploration and colonization of the Americas. The legacy of Columbus is a complex tapestry, woven with threads of exploration, exploitation, cultural exchange, and historical consequence. Columbus's voyages had profound and far-reaching effects on the world. The Columbian Exchange, triggered by the encounter between the old and new worlds, reshaped economies, diets, and societies on both sides of the Atlantic. New crops, animals and technologies were introduced to the Americas, while Europe gained access to previously unknown resources such as tobacco, potatoes and maize. The impact of Columbus's voyages extended beyond the realm of biology and agriculture. The encounter between different cultures led to the exchange of ideas, art and technologies, albeit often in unequal terms. The Columbian Exchange laid the foundation for the global interconnectedness that would characterize the subsequent centuries as goods, people and ideas crisscross the oceans, creating a truly globalized world.
However, the legacy of Columbus is also stained by the darker aspects of colonialism. The arrival of Europeans in the Americas brought about catastrophic consequences for the indigenous peoples. The spread of diseases like smallpox, to which the native populations had no immunity, led to devastating epidemics wiping out entire communities. The clash of cultures resulted in violence, forced labor, and the imposition of European beliefs and systems on the indigenous societies. Columbus himself played a role in these troubling dynamics. His interactions with the native populations ranged from attempts at peaceful coexistence to acts of violence and exploitation. The establishment of Spanish colonies and the encomienda system, a system of forced labor, further strained the relationship between the old and new worlds. Columbus, once seen as a heroic explorer, became a symbol of the darker chapters of colonization and its impact on indigenous cultures. In the centuries following Columbus's death, his legacy underwent significant transformations. During the Age of Exploration, he was celebrated as a hero who bravely ventured into the unknown, expanding the known world and paving the way for future exploration. In the context of European rivalries, Columbus became a symbol of Spanish glory and achievement. However, as historical perspectives evolved and awareness of the consequences of colonization deepened, Columbus's reputation came under scrutiny. The 20th century witnessed a re-evaluation of Columbus and his role in history. Criticism of his treatment of indigenous peoples, the spread of disease, and the broader impacts of European colonization led to calls for re-examining the commemoration of Columbus. In recent decades, debates over Columbus Day, a holiday commemorating his arrival in the Americas, have intensified. Some argue that celebrating Columbus perpetuates a Eurocentric narrative that overlooks the suffering of indigenous peoples. In response to these concerns, there have been calls to reframe the narrative, emphasizing a more inclusive and nuanced understanding of the complex historical events surrounding Columbus and the Age of Discovery. The legacy of Christopher Columbus remains a subject of ongoing discussion and debate. While his voyages undeniably transformed the world and initiated a new era of global interconnectedness, they also brought about immense human suffering and upheaval. Recognizing the complexities of Columbus's legacy allows for a more nuanced understanding of the forces that shaped the course of history during the Age of Discovery and their enduring impact on the present day. Thank you for embarking on this insightful journey through history. If this brief yet enriching historical summary has kindled your curiosity, we extend an invitation to like and subscribe to our channel.